So this morning I'm going to uh, continue with the discussion and briefly go over, uh, reflect upon the romantic life of Balaram, which we've been kind of leading up to a bit, and uh, really kind of an essence of Ori uh, explained the, the picture, the window, the lens, the focus of our founding acharyas, the Goswamis, um, um, on Balaram, and um, how that focus is not on his romantic life, which he does have. Um, so, let us substantiate it to some extent by, with reference to Gandharaj Srimad Bhagavatam. Gandharaj Srimad Bhagavatam. So, the, and then we're going to give initiation to some of the bogus this morning as well, so we'll do that at the end. We'll segue into that later. So, the, uh, the first place in, in, in Bhagavad Purana that the romantic life of Balaram is uh, raised, the subject, is in the very uh, center of the Sakyarasa center of the 10th canto of the Bhagavatam. As I mentioned the other day, there's a Vatsalya Rasa center covering several chapters, a Madhuriya Rasa center covering five chapters, and then there's a Sakyarasa center of the Bhagavatam. Beginning, middle, and end of the Kumarya, beginning, middle, and end 
of the Prokanda Lila, beginning, middle, and end of the Kishore Lila. And within, in each of the beginnings, middles, and ends have no beginning, have no end. <laughs> so they're all eternally existing and death. And, um, and elements of the Kumar Lila that are so endearing, aspects of Krishna's Kumar, Kumar Lila are so endearing to the Vatsali Bhaktas are also present in his Bhaganda Lila that is so endearing to uh, his uh, Sakas. And elements from, from there are also present, plus more, in his Kishore Lila that is so um, um, dear to the gopis and really to all of the devotees because all of the aspects are there. Mm. So therefore he is Nitya Kishore. Ultimately in Nitya Lila there is always a Kishore. In the, in the Prakati, the manifest of the Boma, in the earthly Vrindavan Lila, then you have this uh, Vatsalya and Sakya, only, only in these Lila's. Mm. In Braj. Um, so there can argument that the, the Prakata Lila is more full. Um, but at any rate, at the end of his Kumar Lila, then Krishna, of course, wants to uh, start to herd, herding cows. And this is where we find some conflict now between Vatsalya and, and Sakyarasa. Because herding cows means he's going to go out all day long into the forest with the cows and uh, he'll be gone for eight, nine hours. It's unbearable for Vatsalya Rasa. Plus, the, not only the time, but the dangers of the forest and, and so on and so forth. And uh, it's difficult for them, the parents, not that they show in this case, to see their child moving on from childhood to boyhood. And, and new parents have that kind of experience, I'm sure. Um, so, um, some compromise is made, if, uh, and, um, and Krishna is allowed to herd the calves. So it's kind of interim. Not cows, but calves can't go too far into the forest. Certain restrictions are placed, and so on and so forth. And so, the Ramadan Mohan Lila, we find him herding calves, and the calves are. Kidnapped by Brahma and the Cowboy Boys, of course, Krishna manifests as the calves and the Cowboy Boys. And his parents, as Marsh, I think, was explaining in classic Avia that night, um, find themselves more attracted to their children and to their, and to their calves than previously because you now um, Krishna has become the calves, Krishna has become the, um, the Cowboy Boys, and so forth. But this is. Uh, Sakharas is very beautifully portrayed there. Nonetheless, it, uh, when Krishna enters into his Poganda Lila, then the Sakharas is blossoming more. And the 15th chapter of the 10th canto, uh, the Kalindi Asura, this showcases his Poganda Lila up to his Kishore Lila. It ends with the, kind of the beginning of his Kishore Lila, as I said the other night. The end of the chapter ends with him coming back from Vrindavan and exchanging glances with the Gopikas who are waiting and uh, much is uh, transmitted, if you will, in, in such a uh, glance, exchange of um, eyes, exchange of hearts, I should say, through the audience. So, um, beautiful chapter, and while uh, Krishna's Romantic life starts to come out in the Prakatila, right there at the, at the end of this, this 15th chapter. Similarly, Balram's uh, romantic life is uh, brought up for the first time, is raised for the first time, and Krishna himself raises it. And this chapter is, is, um, begins with a a description of Krishna and Balaram now becoming cowherders. This occurs on Gopastami. Gopastami is the, the day in Kartik Mas when uh, Krishna is 
an officially named account worker is given a stick and uh, they're required paraphernalia. There's a ceremony, the Brahmins come and bless him and he uh, feeds the cows. It's a huge, huge event. Hmm? Uh, there's a beautiful Sanskrit drum written by uh, Dorkin at the top where the Sakharas lineage coming from Sundarananda was Sumal, which he was Sudama in Krishna Leela. Expanding upon the feeling uh, and depicting the uh, Gopastami ceremony and subsequent uh, Calvary. Uh, translation. Yeah. So, um, a rare book. Which hasn't happened yet. 
So it's kind of a forecasting um, of the of the uh, into the future. And even while mentioning it, Krishna is really prominently, predominantly talking about his own romantic life. And his Maharam has one too, and he's using him in this way to kind of uh, in one sense predict the future, and in another sense this chapter is covering a lot of time in a short span. You have to keep up with so right after the this statement is made, then embedded in the in the grammar there, Chakravitaka has drawn out the the uh, feeling that, that and, and I will elaborate upon this where Chakravitaka is left off, I will expand upon it. The whole and this is the expansion, the whole glorification of Balaram in one sense is for the sake of um, inspiring, encouraging the greater balance of the gopas, those who are sakas, those who are priya sakas, those who are surit sakas, that means sakas whose 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 sakas is mixed with dasya, sakas whose Dasaratas, Dasas, only Sakya, who Sakyaras is pure Sakyaras, and Sakas who Sakyaras is mixed with what's all in this group, these three, or four. There's the fourth, the pre and arm Sakas. Uh, we'll get to that. But these three are the greater balance, in one sense. Of course, there's an infinite number of each, so it's hard to say um, which is more of infinite <laughs> but, uh, groups. But um, the point is, Krishna is now in the forest and it's come to midday. And earlier, through the sign language of Sabal and the shenanigans of, of ostensibly of Madhavongo, uh, there has been communicated um, a plan for a rendezvous uh, with the gopis, then between Krishna and the gopis. So Krishna has to separate himself from the balance of the gopas, how will they let him go? So he has glorified Balaram hmm? and suggested that after having done so in considerable measure, suggesting that I think the balance of you should stay with Balaram and I'm going to go for a short time. I've got something to do. There's a famous astrologer that's come to town and I would like to go and, 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 and hear from him, but we can't all go there. So, let me take a few of you with me. And the rest of you stay with Balaram. And again, he's engaged in this extraordinary kind of glorification of Balaram. So, uh, they feel confident and somewhat to be left with him while Krishna goes with his select friends who are the pre and sakas who Sakyabal is influenced by um, Madhuri Rasa. So, So uh, this is perhaps the beginning in, in, in the entirety of the narrative of, of Krishna Lila, the tenth canto, with any mention of the romantic life of Krishna or Balaram. Now Krishna goes directly and, and becomes involved in it. Mm -hmm. um, and at the end of the chapter, as I say, it, it, it comes out as well. Balaram is mentioned in passing and in the context of jest, but as I say, Truth is said and yes, so it is a fact. Balaram does have a romantic life. Mm -hmm. And all glories to those who associate with him in that way. I only go on to say that, this, that our focus is somewhat uh, different at the same time. Mm -hmm. The next place I believe that the romantic life of Balaram is mentioned is in the 34th chapter of the 10th canto, when um, the Festival of Holi is performed now. It's a popular festival called, referred to as the, the Festival of Colors, celebrated uh, around the world without probably much understanding of what it's about, and probably that's true in India as well. <laughs> uh, but uh, a joyous occasion, cultural and religious uh, festival. It actually uh, follows Shivaratri, hmm? and uh, there's many different 
meanings to it, uh, religious meanings and cultural meanings, we have to look at it within the broad spectrum of, of Hinduism. But it is a, um, well, in the, in the Bhagavatam, we find Krishna and Balaram with gopis together in the forest. Hmm? And the demon Sambhachuda comes and so forth. And, but if we look carefully, we, we find in the Bhagavatam that Krishna and, 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 and Balaram are with the gopis along with the gopas, along with their friends. So suddenly, what might look like a romantic picture that has a parallel to Krishna's Rasa Leela, and Balaram's there, and Krishna's there, and the gopis are there, starts to, the, 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 the romantic atmosphere starts to become compromised by the presence of cowboy boys and their, and their youth, and they're all throwing colors at one another, and shooting one another with syringes, and, of colors and so forth, so it's a, it's quite a different setting than the Rasalila, hmm? which is a born name and darker than night, and nobody knows. It's only Krishna, one Krishna, of course he expands the man, and, and it's only gopis, and this is a full, as I say, face of Madhuri Rasa. So, in, in, in this instance, um, there's some mentions, that, uh, some gopis, like Balaram, but nothing comes of it, and they're very young, and, um, and it's, it's uh, uh, not uh, developed by Sukadeva Goswami at all. I'm just going over it briefly. And then uh, later, of course, Krishna and Balaram go to Matura and Dwarka, and at one point, uh, Krishna um, acquiesces to Balaram's request that he go to Vrindavan to pacify the inhabitants there. And uh, Krishna gives his blessing. It's a long and beautiful uh, story. Um, but uh, in the context of giving his blessing, he has to go back. Uh, 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 Krishna tells Paul, and when you're back there, you should marry those gopis. Hmm? Had Krishna not made this point, it wasn't really on Balaram's mind. What's on Balaram's mind is to go to Vrindavan and represent Krishna and, and try to pacify the inhabitants of Vrindavan by remembrances of him and ultimately, as he did, giving a promise that Krishna would return. Hmm? Uh, the thought is that Uddhava was sent, but he really didn't do such a good job. He was sent to deliver a message and pacify the inhabitants of Braj, but he himself was not a Braj Vasi. So, more than to pacify them, one says he was sent to learn about the love of Vrindavan that is like off the scriptural map that he was fully acquainted with and would refer to readily as Krishna's advisor in Dwarka. So, it's going to be and went, Uddhava was sent to get a message from the gopis <laughs> rather than to deliver one to him. In fact, the message that he read to them, when they replied back as to its meaning, it kind of blew his mind. That's what you got out of that. You found that in there. I didn't see that. And then he realized he was in another realm that he was unacquainted with, that is like beyond beyond the scripture. Shruti Vyuta may be on part of his poetry. He walked around for a couple of months in Vrindavan singing poems and praise of the inhabitants of Vrindavan. Balaram, on the other hand, of course, he's a Prashapas that we heard. He's born in Vrindavan from Rohini and so forth. So uh, he has better, he's better suited to pacify them. And this is his whole premise for his going. It has nothing to do with marrying some gopis that had a crush on him back during Holi, you know, many, many years ago. Hmm? Uh, that's not on his mind, but Krishna puts it on his mind. He says, when you're there, you should, you should tend to those, to those gopis, you should marry them. He says, oh, well, whatever, and off he goes. Right, so, when he arrives in Vrindavan, 
then um, he meets with the different sectors. He's with the for friends of Krishna, parents of Krishna, and ultimately he meets with the gopis as well. And which gopis is he meeting with? He's meeting with Krishna's gopis, not the gopis who had a crush on him during during holy. And how does, what is the nature of the meeting? So the, the, the chapter, the whole central focus of the chapter is that Krishna is there to pacify the inhabitants of Vrindavan who are feeling separation from Krishna, to particularly to speak to the gopis and give Krishna's message to them, and to represent him hmm? purely, to reflect. It's said that Malaram's in the, in, the, in, the, in the oral tradition, Balaram so accurately represented Krishna that his complexion turned black. Before you find some some deities, famous deities in Vrindavan and Tauji, he's, he's black instead of white. It, it's a deity um, uh, that represents this moment, if you will, that Krishna, some. Uh, uh, He's referred to there by Siddhartha Goswami by the epithet Sankarsha. Sankarsha means to draw, so can attract in this instance. So he could attract, he could bring Krishna there. As Guru bring, represents, represents and brings Krishna here and mediates and gives the experience of Krishna and accepts service on behalf of Krishna from the disciple and it all goes Krishna. He doesn't take any gopis himself. <laughs> That's not allowed. Right? So, uh, so here we find Balaram in, in, in a similar role, and he so much represents them. And, and that, that again, he's, 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 according to the oral tradition, he's beautiful. Light. His complexion turns black. Let's make a deity out of that moment. Hmm? That moment in the leader. Hmm? And, and, and serve that. So, again, in the epithet, Sankarshan is what you, how, we, how he's referred to, and, and in the text there, we find him, uh, which, is, which has some, uh, uh, in, which implies that the gopis had some respect for him. Hmm? So, that's of course an interesting point with regard to Guru also, because the Guru is a representative of Krishna, and we want to relate with Krishna as a friend or as a lover. Still, uh, uh, we don't relate with the Guru in that way, but as a teacher. And um, so the gopis related to Balaram with some respect. Not how they would relate to Krishna, but they were the elder brother of Krishna. And yes, he's representing them. He, he, him. They can feel his presence, but they have, in, in the grammar we find, they have regard for Balaram. And Balaram, in the text we can see also, has regard for them. D.G. Goswami has said that, Radha, that, that, that Balaram has parental feelings for Radha. Hmm? He mentioned this in Bhakti Rasami hmm? uh, So, there are no romantic feelings of Balaram for Krishna's gopis. At that time, Balaram promises Radha's gopis that he will, you can take my move, but Krishna will return. I'll make sure that he comes back. Hmm? And Diva Goswami explains that Radharani accepted that he'll bring him back. So, all right. Hmm? Uh, Uddhava couldn't bring him here, but he said, here at Bridge Prize, we, we, we didn't take his word for it. We feel his presence practically. We, 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 we respect your, your statement. But, having said that, Robert Ray says, there, there's something else on our mind. And that is that all this time that you have been gone, Balaram, some friends of mine have been living. <laughs> In, in, an, in an emaciated condition, hmm? hoping for your return. Hmm? Some other gopis, they're not here tonight, you're not even talking to them. Hmm? These are the ones that Krishna said, and you should marry those gopis. 
right? So he hasn't even remembered what Krishna said yet. He's talking to Krishna's gopis. Rana Rani reminds him. These other gopis, they, 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 they've never deviated in their uh, ambition to have you as, as their husband. And uh, so my request is that you uh, satisfy their desire. So Balaram responds, he says, yes, I, I can do that, but let me first get the permission of Nanda Maharaj and, and, and other elders. So at every step, there's some hesitation, and it's really, uh, it's kind of an anti-climatic um, section of that chapter in the Bhagavatam where that marriage actually takes place at Ramgat. And Balaram is off with, the, with his own gopis. He engages in a, what we might call a, um, what is the term? Gandharva marriage. No one's invited. <laughs> there's, there's no big festival announcement, celebration. Man, marriage is a big thing, right? Uh, especially in that, that culture. There's no, there's no announcement. He's doing it on the side. And in the context of doing it, he shows extraordinary Aishvarya as well, with regard to uh, the Jamunas, uh, uh, unwillingness to, to, to move over to where he is, and he drags her. And, and so he, he, he manifests his, his plow. And this is a side of Balaram with majesty that is moving away from the intimacy that we find in him as the covered friend of Krishna. Mm -hmm. Again, I think I mentioned the other way, the other day that Bhagavad Gita has commented on this in his commentary of Chaitanya Bhagavad. Uh, Dhamma Das refers to this as the Rasalila of, of, of Balaram. Mm -hmm. the, the, the reason he makes this point, um, uh, Vrindavan Das, is he wants to emphasize the divinity of Balaram. So, if you say that Krishna is Bhagavan because he has a rasa dance, Balaram is not, he said, well, Balaram has a rasa dance too. He's also God, he wants to make this point. And this was an important point in Gaur Lila that Gaur himself made repeatedly. It did not, it was not from Balaram, is God. It did not, is God, it did not, is God. Again and again, he showed his devotees that they would, so that they would respect him and not bring ruination upon themselves and their bhakti by disrespecting the Dhananda, which, as I mentioned earlier, also happened to Krishna's Kaviraj Swami's brother. brother. Hmm? So, Vrindavan Das, in the very beginning of Chaitanya Bhagavad, is making an emphasis on this, the divinity of Nityananda Ram, who is the Andrayami, the inner, the Lord of his heart, is Ishtadevata, told him to write Chaitanya Bhagavad and so forth. But it's really a poor excuse for a Rasaleva also. A little better than the Holy Festival, but um, you know, he's showing his his uh, Aishvari, his divinity there, that he's God, and he's, he's dragging the Jamuna with his plow, and, and so on and so forth. Of course, he's intoxicated, um, so he's not himself um, <laughs> either. He had to get drunk to go through it, you know. <laughs> Do it. And, uh, and so, on the side, somewhere, after, the whole chapter is about Balaram uh, bringing a message from Krishna to the inhabitants of Vrindavan and the gopis in particular, on the side of Balaram gets married, and to who? Hmm? The anonymity, anonymity of his wives in Braj is an important point to us. Because if we are to enter into the Brachalila, how will we do that? What is the way? It is a way, it is, it is a following. Anugatya, hmm? rak anuga. Anuga means to follow. So you have to have someone to follow. Hmm? So in Sakharas we have the primary figures, Subal, Sridham, and so forth, so Krishna. In Vatsali Rasa, Nanda, Jashoda, and so forth, and then Madhuri Rasa, Lita, Vashaka, Upamanjari, 
who we follow. We want to become one of Balaram's wives. <laughs> we don't know her name. It's an unknown. So as I said the other day, it's like if there was a hero and a heroine and the hero had a best friend and in the movie and he's also married but nobody knows who she is or maybe she comes in once or something and, and, uh, and she doesn't, she's not even nominated for some best supporting actor, she's hardly in, in, the, in the picture. It means to say, again, if we began with all glories to Balram's wives, <laughs> that, that, that this is an aspect of Balram's uh, Leela and the brush Leela that is in the background that is part of a, a setting that facilitates sadhakas like ourselves entering into the Leela through the windows of opportunity that the Sambhadaya makes available through Gaur and Nityananda and Madhuryarasa and, and for some um, almost as a byproduct from, of promoting Madhuryarasa uh, ca uh, catching the uh, contagious mob of Nityananda Mabu and following through uh, the window of, uh, of Sakyarati. So, uh, I'm just going through this very briefly because we kind of talked about it to some extent already. These are, these are the primary leelas where Balaram's romantic life is mentioned. As we can see, it's not the primary focus by any measure. Again, I, I was saying about the son when we finished that, he has referred to that uh, relationship between Balaram and his gopis as Mariyala. Mariyala means abhidi, it's another word for vaidi bhakti. Whereas uh, Krishna's romance with the gopis, this is Raghunuga, and Balaram's bromance with Krishna, <laughs> that is Raghunuga. <laughs> he has a bromance more than a romance. So that is called Sambandhuga. Right? <laughs> and gopis' love for Krishna is, is Kamandhuga. Mm -hmm. Now, again, we'll just conclude this with some mention of, of, of Nanda Manjari. Because of the Shakti expansion of Krishna, of, of, of Balaram. Um, and some people have very poorly reasoned in the name of theology that just as Krishna wanted to taste Radha's love, so Balaram wanted to taste Ananda Manjari's love, therefore did not was come to earth to taste Manjari Brahman. So this is a, not good theology hmm, at all. Um, Nanda Manjari is not the, the romantic partner of Krishna, of Balaram, excuse me. She is absorbed, the younger sister of Radharani, she's absorbed in Madhurya Rasa for Krishna and arguably for, for Radha and Krishna. Um, and she's really not a Manjari, only a Manjari in name. Therefore, she has, there are instances in which she has direct uh, intimacy with Krishna, which is a, a, the absence of which is a distinct and distinguishing characteristic of Manjari Bhav that's uh, brought up in Chaitanya Charitamrita. As, as Krishna asks us going to the sadhya, the goal, the highest ideal, he mentions the sakis. He doesn't use the word Manjari, and uh, maybe it's a later uh, word. Um, in Chaitanya Charitamrita, he used the word sakis, which means female friends here. But he says one thing about them is that they have no desire to associate intimately with Krishna. So if you understand the teaching, you know, this reference to Radha's handmaids, this their speciality, of course, that comes out in the works of the, uh, the Vaswamis. It is the math. Really, there's math to that. I mean, in other words, they, there's a calculation of sorts that that will be the best way to please Krishna. If I have direct union with Krishna, I could not possibly draw from him as much as Radha could. Therefore, rather than trying to draw reciprocation from him directly, why don't I serve Radha, who's drawing more than anyone else from him. And as a, as, as, a, as a result of my identification with her bhava in every respect, and through service of that bhava, then I will experience 
what she experiences. This is especially out in the course of the Mandiri. But anyway, I'm not a Mandiri, not particularly a, a, a Mandiri, Saki. And has a romantic life with, uh, uh, with Krishna. And uh, she, yes, she's one with Balaram in Tattva as much as the Shakti is one with the Shakti Man being dependent upon, the, the energy is dependent upon the energetic. The heat and light are dependent upon the fire, therefore they're one. But the difference in Balaram, the difference in Balaram between Manjari, Ananda Manjari and Balaram is uh, significant. Hmm? Um, so, of course, when Nityananda Prabhu, when Balaram comes to the world as Nityananda Prabhu, then he does um, eventually, and we, we can extend the point, he does eventually marry, hmm, which is at a later stage in life, and only at the order of Gaur Krishna. Hmm? This is Balaram only married because Krishna said he should marry those girls. So, in Gorli, the Chaitanya Mahaprabhu tells Balaram, Nityananda Prabhu, go back to Bengal and get married and then circulate amongst the household of people like one of them and deliver Bengal. So he does. And, uh, and Kabi Karnapur has described um, Janavi Devi as an incarnation of Anunga Manjari in Revati, who is his wife in Dwaraka, so other affair, right? Which is certainly not Rob Mark um, side of, of Balaram either. So there in Gorlila, again, and we went into this to some extent yesterday, where we find the Dinana Prabhu, just as, as, as Balaram was doing in Krishna, is assisting. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in uh, his distribution of, of Gopi Bhav. In, he's more directly involved there. As Balaram, he's involved, but he's involved by getting out of the way, so to speak, so that it, it, it can happen. Mm -hmm. So, a few points um, from uh, the sacred texts themselves to substantiate this. Um, and make clear the picture and the focus of Balaram in, 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 in Christian Buddha from the point of view of the Gaudiya Sampradaya. Mm -hmm. With that said, we have a very, you know, we're very fortunate to be members of the Gaudiya Sampradaya and members of the Parivar of Bhakti Vantapur. Parivar is a, is a nice word used to refer to the lineage or line of coming from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's associates, so you have the Nityananda Parivar, you have the uh, Gadadhar Parivar, um, Advaita Parivar. Um, so the family of devotees connected to these principal associates, uh, there is um, uh, these, li these lineages were started by the associates of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the Goswamis, as I say, the Panchatattva, and so forth. So we have these, um, as Jiva Goswami says, the Chaitanya Mahaprabhu started his own Sampradaya and many streams of that in, in the world, coming from his principal associates. So, when Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur's young disciples were out and about, and they were asked, which Parivar are you associated with? They weren't sure how to answer. Um, maybe it hadn't been brought up or thought of in that way. But uh, at the same time, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvatthaka would receive Harinam, which, uh, the, the blessing to chant Harinam from Bhakti Vinodhakura. Today we're going to give the, the blessing to chant Harinam. This is an important thing. Um, uh, Yeah, anyone can chant, that's true. Um, but, if in the, if, 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 but if in the context of our chanting, we don't understand from the chanting the value and the necessity to um, 
engage in such uh, Krishna Bhakti, Kirtan is Krishna Bhakti, um, along with Guru Bhakti, then we risk making offense. It is an offense to the name to disregard the Guru. So if we think, I don't need a Guru, I just chant, we are disregarding the Guru. Some people think like that, who needs a Guru? We just chant. And they imagine, of course, that they have some Guru of the past, the Purvacharya. Hmm. Purvacharyas are important and they can help us in every way. We should pray to them. They can't help us in the way that a present Acharya can. Purvacharya cannot replace the role of the present Acharya. Purva means previous. So we need a present Acharya, as the Purvacharya is all taught. And um, if we disregard the Guru, the principle of Guru, then it, this is Namapara. So it's important that in our, our chanting, this should come to light. And we should think, I've got this method. Uh, and I, mean, I might even be finding some results. So I, I had one, it's possible you could hear it and chant, and I first received the Maha Mantra on the back of a pack of incense. It was a long time ago in California, I think it was. And, uh, and on the back of the pack of incense it said, chant this mantra and your life will be sublime. So I began chanting it. I didn't know about the Hare Krishna movement and so forth. Um, I began chanting. I would chant it always in my mind <laughs> and so forth. But of course, I wanted to follow where does it come from and you know, how does it work and get some instruction about it and so on. This is very natural, right? So to find a guru was, was very important. I think it should be to all of us to find good guidance. Um, so, uh, yes, it's said that Harinam is independent of Diksha. Because Harinam is Krishna himself, he can do whatever he wants. But, that said, what does he do? Hmm? <laughs> he can do whatever he wants, that's the point. What does he do? He makes himself known, reveals himself through those sadhus who are representing him and blessing others to chant the name and giving them diksha also, which uh, the diksha mantra, the Krishna mantra, which will help them to take advantage of Harinam. Mm -hmm. So we give the blessing to chant Hare Krishna, to, to chant Ma Mantra, which is not Nam Mantra, under the guidance of uh, the Guru. This is how you're going to uh, derive the best uh, possible results. You're going to also get Nam Shrestam. You're going to get a conception of, of, of the name coming from the heart of the Guru as he uh, or she speaks the mantra into your ear and so forth and, and sends it to your, to your heart. You can speak it in the right ear and with his finger in the left ear so it doesn't, doesn't go out. <laughs> <laughs> That's the no. Yes, they have that, that kind of trajectory from heart to heart. The ear, the tongue, these are just vehicles, but it's a heart to heart uh, transmission. Mm -hmm. So, at any rate, Pakistan starts off to receive the blessing to chant Krishna Nam from Bhakti Natabha. Bhakti Natabha asked him to take Diksha from Gorkashore, that's how much marsh. So, a whole big hit issue that all kinds of people like to talk about, think about, and think they understand and know about. This is, these are events that took place um, more than a hundred years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's not a lot of recorded actual, factual, historical information about all of it. You can pick something here, you can hear something there. Uh, Bhakti Siddhanta didn't like Bhipi Bihari Goswami, Diksha Guru of, of um, but to know that, but to actually, I mean, please, I mean, to actually understand historically what happened and all the details is absolutely impossible. So to get on your computer pulpit and pronounce 
exactly what happened and why Bhakti Siddhanta was not bona fide or why it is or what not in relation to this is it, it's really a waste of time. Palena Parijita, we judge by the by the result. Bhakti Siddhanta Sarsri Thakur was 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 given the the world stage, so to speak, uh, concern of Bhakti Vinod to take and do something with. I mean that's pretty much undeniable. There is a letter to that effect from Bhakti Vinod to Bhakti Bhakti Siddhanta Sarsati Thakur. Uh, there are some there are some uh, you told me years ago in Finland that there are some biographical notes of Bhakti Siddhanta that we found that shed light on his relationship with Bhikkhu Bihari Goswami that's in, in, uh, that contradicts some of the mythological stories about his disrespect for him and so forth. Hmm? So, um, he might have had some differences. There's a place for that. He was a great soul. Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvata, we could have amongst great souls, there are some differences. But at any rate, um, then Bhakti Vinod Thakur wanted <laughs> that, that's pretty clear <laughs> from the historical record, that Bhakti Siddhanta take initiation, take diksha from Gorkashore. Hmm? So some people say, but you didn't get diksha from Gorkashore. Hmm? But I don't know, it's that's an interesting conjecture, but there's a number of things to say about that. Um, and there are some historical evidence to the contrary. But one of the things is that, that Bhakti Vinod wanted it. That's pretty powerful. Because Guru Kishore Babaji had a lot of respect for Bhakti Vinod Thakur. He used to go and hear Bhagavad, the, the, the Bhagavatam discourses of, of, of Bhakti Vinod. And they were, they were uh, closely associated. He wanted his son, say, Diksha from Guru Kishore, who was like somewhat oblivious to external affairs and rather unorthodox in his behavior and so forth and um, questionable whether he gave initiation to anybody, rather cynical about following and so on and so forth. Um, but, uh, and, and on the other hand, you have Bhakti Siddhanta, whose moral character was, was impeccable. He was desired by so many people to join their group because of his moral a character and scholarship and, and, and so forth, uh, who himself he testified that, that what impressed him about Gore Kishore was that he was the one person who was uninterested in all of his assets. The assets, material assets of Bhakti Siddhanta were desirable by many groups and persons. And Gore Kishore had no interest in them. When he experienced that, then he really understood uh, he had compelling kind of evidence for moving in the direction of the request of, of, of Bhakti Vinod Thakur. And I think it's undeniable that uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasri Thakur had a connection with Gaur Kishore. And some say, well, if he did, how come he didn't get the Diksha Patra, the letter that says, you're initiated into the Advaita Party Bar, and these are the Siddhas, if you think they're Siddhas, in, 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 in the line, hmm, so forth. And these are details, formalities. Some people ask, you know, let's take our Bhakti Vilas. I think um, Sanatana Goswami gives several ways in which the diksha can be performed. You can rise early, take a bath in the sacred river before sunrise, and, come, and so many things, or then a modified form or a modified form from that, or just share the mantra. That's what you're going to So, uh, at different times, at different places, different conventions, and different details may be introduced, incorporated um, for uh, um, the, uh, the sharing, the transmission of the, of, of the mantra, which is the essence, the heart uh, of uh, of Diksha. They can be altered, they can be changed, and a person like Gorgashor was rather unorthodox in everything he did. Hmm? There's, uh, uh, I mean, he would take like raw eggplants and offer them and then eat them. Hmm? Um, hard to follow that example. 
and many, many, many stories. You, you know, some of you are familiar with the unorthodox behavior of Gorbachev, so that he would give an unorthodox version of initiation. That's not, 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 not a stretch. Hmm? Uh, and for his whole life, Bhaktisattva Sarsatthaka revered Gorbachev, that's probably some of his disciples met uh, Gorkashore, Keshav Marsh met uh, Gorkashore as Babaji Marsh, and he, Babaji Marsh, shared with Keshav Marsh, the disciple of Bhaktisiddhanta, um, uh, in words, his affection for the Thakur of Bhaktisiddhanta, so So, at any rate, and the results are there that he started a great mission that uh, we're all somewhat, somewhat uh, connected with, whether we like it or not. You know, one time, it's funny. Think about, but I was once in Bengala and in a shop, uh, and so I think getting something for a deity or, or something like that. And the shopkeeper, um, who of course I know, know knew for years and whatnot, he said, "So, Marsh, which temple are you with now?" And I said, "I'm not in Iskcon." And he said, oh, everybody in his gun. <laughs> I said, yeah, I guess that's true too. <laughs> I'm not in his gun. <laughs> Can't escape it. <laughs> it was a good thing, so there's some, some truth to that. It's the International Society for Krishna Hobbes. It was a big idea, probably a big idea. And it included all of you, don't, don't have any doubt about that. There's a few guys sitting behind the computer say you're not included. Don't, don't, don't take that uh, too seriously. I was telling you the other day where we were walking that, that every, 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 when you probably come to the temple and then they would, in the morning after the Mongol Arctic, the GBC or somebody, the temple president would make an announcement that probably it's going on the walk this morning, only the GBC and sannyasis can go. That was his, they were trying to manage it like that. And once Prabhupada invited me on the walk, then after that I whether they you know, made that announcement or not, I was, I was there. And Prabhupada talked to me and <laughs> recognized me, and they couldn't do anything about it. They couldn't touch me. And I saw, I had a number of experiences of Prabhupada like, uh, um, overriding, if you will, the rules. So if the rules say you're not members, uh, you don't have to listen too much. The rules are meant to be broken. So, at any rate, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarsati Thakur uh, had connection both with the Nityananda Parivar coming from Janava, Bhakti Vinod Thakur's Diksha line, and the Diksha line of uh, Gorkishor, which is said to be in the Advaita Parivar. And so his students would ask, what, what, What's your Parivar? They weren't sure how to answer. So when they asked Bhakti Siddhanta, what did he say? He said, you tell them that you're in the Bhakti Vinod Parivar. Which is a, kind of peculiar in a way because, as I said, these lineages begin in one sense with the eternal associates of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, like Radhar, Shivas, and Rupa Goswami. And here's Bhakti Vinod coming hundreds of years, 400 years later. How can it be the Bhakti Vinod Parivar? Well, it's not an unprecedented um, idea because we have the Narutam Parivar, we have the Shamananda Parivar, for example. Shamananda, Narutam Thakur, they weren't direct, they, uh, they weren't present at the time of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But they played a prominent role. Uh, the guru of Narutam Thakur was Lokanath Goswami. One of the original Goswamis that was sent by Mahaprabhu, like Rupa Sananda, to Vrindavan to excavate the places of Krishna's pastimes. Very important person, but he only had one disciple, was Narasim Thakur, who had a hard time, somebody made a little story, becoming the disciple of Lokanath Goswami. But Narasim's work was extensive, and so uh, it stood out. His canvassing uh, throughout uh, India and Manipur in particular, his style of kirtan and so forth. Many, many um, uh, poems that he wrote, probably to say that the, the uh, abstract and esoteric Vedic wisdom is all fully there in the poems, simple Bengali poems of Narutam Thakur. 
the rich. Uh, Gorkashore was said to be illiterate, we mentioned him earlier, but he was found to be always carrying the, um, what is the book of Maritza Um Prima Bhakti Chandrika, with him wherever he went. Book of Songs of Maritza Chandrika. Um, expressions of his heart. Uh, so, so, his lineage in which Vishnu Chakri Thakur comes is now referred to as the Lokanath Parivar. Well, Lokanath was the associate of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It's referred to as the Narta Parivar. Shamananda, of course, was the disciple of, of, of Hridai Chaitanya, who was the disciple of Goridas Pandit, who was Subal hmm, in Krishna Lila, and the direct, direct, direct associate of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the Nanda. So he's three um, removed, one, two generate. Well, it's the Gauri Das, Chaitanya, then Duki Krishna Das, who became Shamananda. But because, not, of, not because of the external um, prominence in terms of a campaign for outreach and sharing the teachings, as in the case of Naratam, but for internal reasons, which were peculiar, extraordinary. Um, uh, Duki Krishna also became then uh, Shamananda. His lineage is not referred to as the Goridas Paribar, but as the Shamananda Paribar. So, there may be other examples as well. So, Bhaktivinoda Thakur made a very extraordinary uh, contribution. Really, the contribution of Bhaktivinoda Thakur is such that all of Gaudiya Vaishnavism, all the lineages of Gaudiya Vaishnavism, have gotten life from his work. This is undeniable. Not only that, but as I said the other day, all the other Sampradayas have also gotten some life from the Parivar or from the lineage coming through Bhakti Nota, who um, was empowered to interface with the modern world in a way that had, had really never been done uh, before. And in doing that, he took some liberties. He took some liberties, uh, as did Bhakti Siddhanta with regard to convention, and adjusting details, and even some liberties, a couple of liberties philosophically as well. Mm -hmm. Great people can do, can do extraordinary things. Mm -hmm. um, so the preaching strategies of Bhakti Manotakura, they may have their shelf life, may have been exhausted by now, that's another thing, but they were effective in their times. Mm -hmm. And you have to look at his persona and everything, Everything else he's done, and then understand those strategies accordingly, rather than judging by a strategy that you think doesn't make sense because you now you're living 100 years later and it doesn't make sense. <laughs> so, um, so, so, Bhakti Siddhanta's idea, an idea that's this is the Bhakti Vinod party, but it's a very charming idea and it's compelling and it's uh, it, it seems to be something that was also, in a sense recognized in the, in the religious, but uh, in the religious community um, that, for example, uh, who, who was it uh, who referred to him in writing as the uh, Seventh Goswami? Mm -hmm. uh, editor for the paper in Calcutta, I believe. Um, I forget his name. Yeah, I forget his name. So anyway, stuck seventh Goswami, and his work parallels the Goswamis who excavated the Vrindavan, the place of Krishna's pastimes. No one did more to excavate the place of, of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes than Bhakti Vinod. Bhakti Vinod really put Mayapur on the world map, and and later in his body bar, um, Swami probably put Vrindavan on the map. In fact, they named the road from Delhi. When the road from, from Delhi comes to Vrindavan, then the road into Vrindavan in 1975, when I took sannyas at the opening of the Krishna Balaram temple, the whole town of Vrindavan named the road Bhaktivedanta Mark. Hmm? I mean, you don't know how celebrated Prabhupada was in Vrindavan. 
He was so celebrated in Vrindavan amongst all the shopkeepers. He made them all wealthy. <laughs> <laughs> Selling tilak and beads and mukuts and dresses for deities and so forth. I mean, he was so popular amongst all that whole Vaishya uh, community there. Um, and the Brahmins came to accept him in time as well. He was quite charming, Prabhupada, and his Krishna Balaram temple was, was uh, the opening was a, was a big, big, big affair. I mean, every big dignitary, religious dignitary in Vrindavan was present for that. It was like three, four, five, I don't know what, how many day affair, the installation of Krishna Balaram and the opening of the temple. I took some house from Prabhupada just, just after it, it opened, and before Krishna Balaram. Um, so, uh, this lineage coming from Bhaktivedanta, mean, obviously it, it, it has predecessors, but to call it the Bhaktivedanta Party, it makes uh, sense and it's not unprecedented, as I say. Unprecedented, as I say. So, we are following in this uh, dignified line. It has its uniqueness, its unique contribution, and one of its Characteristics, I think, is, is is has this penchant for outreach and sharing, and explaining the teachings in a contemporary way, and so on and so forth. And not everybody has to do that. Not everybody will, but we do. And it's a service that we do. It also serves to nourish some of these other lineages. If someone comes here and hears from me and gets inspired, and and then. Um, and then it eventually wants to get initiated somewhere else, we want to just give them a ticket and celebrate that. It's great to go there, and nourish that lineage. We don't mind. So we 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 are a service to all the all the lineages and to the people in general, trying to share Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teaching and bring the dignity to it that it deserves by giving it some recognition and honor. Contemporary uh, world. Of thought, science, and philosophy, it, it has much to offer. So, it's a peculiarity of us. And, and it's not, this, this is a broader idea, but it's not at the cost of any depth. Our outreach is not at the cost of understanding the depth of the possibilities and the potential that's found in, through the dispensation of war and the people. We want to go to the very hard, of Gaudi Vaishnavism. And then we want to try to explain it to the common man, which requires an awful lot of thought, concentration, and absorbing the mind, which is uh, what the whole, uh, what the center of, of, of yoga, if you will. And so, Kirtana Prabhavi Swarama Swarava, as is a nice statement. By the power of kirtan, this smarma will arise naturally in the heart. Heart has to be cleansed of the smarma. Hmm? You can't you can't do meditation with a with a, with a impure heart. Hmm? You can do kirtan with a pure heart, and it will purify your heart, hmm? and it will give rise to meditation naturally. That, that's my practical experience. Hmm? You can't underestimate. Don't dare to. The power of the holy name will make offense. Hmm? Um, this was Mahaprabhu's method also. So, so we emphasize in that way. And, um, and we are uh, very fortunate, we feel, to be humble uh, and simple members of the great Mukti Paribar. So some of you feel the same way. And so we are then If by the siksha share, one's heart becomes captured, then they will capture the person who is giving the, the heart from which the siksha is coming. Right? You understand? If, uh, if we give siksha and your heart is captured, then you'll say, your heart is affected me now, I can't go anywhere else. I have to make my stand here and so this is the way of love works. Mm -hmm. This is the law of attraction. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's different than the movie, but um, the law of attraction. 
<laughs> so we're, we're running on all attractive Krishna things, so making overture to us through the medium of Guru Parampara. We respond to that, and Guru Parampara has to take notice and honor your sincere desire, and then help you to understand what you're what you what you sign on for here. So as you go forward, be prepared over the years to what you thought Krishna consciousness was. It's different than that, <laughs> or it's more than that. It's a lot more than that. It's that and something more, and that will go on forever. So in this school, you and I, all of us, we are all students forever. So that's the nature of the subject. Our, our God, Krishna, is trying to figure himself out. Right? The nature of praying is that it's full and ever-expanding at the same time. So these are very funny ideas <laughs> that uh, meant to take us beyond that which lies between our ears. And by way of using that also, the head, to soften our heart. You, you know, we are accustomed to thinking that we know by thought, by intelligence. There are many, many ways of knowing that, um, that uh, can be arrived at without any, any measure of intelligence or human brain. Even you find it even in animals. They have ways of knowing that don't involve a brain or the same kind of brain, a sophisticated brain, or the, the brain that can, can engage in logic, let's say. Hmm? So don't be attached to the idea that knowing is derived from uh, knowledge or a lot of logic or reason that reason can weigh in con conclusively on any particular issue. Hmm? There, there are other ways of knowing and they may be more comprehensive. So ours is a transrational way of knowing. It's not irrational, but it picks up where reason leaves off. Therefore, reason is only valuable when it serves the, the, the argument of revelation. And so, gradually, you have to learn, as far as reason goes, to reason, what do we call, like, Shastra Yuki. When you get some feeling for this, you can reason according to support your faith. Hmm? Um, reason is not a, 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 to, to uh, faith is an active thing. Hmm? Reason is kind of inactive. It's kind of a fence-sitting affair. You can sit on the fence and analyze whether the grass on that side is greener or the grass on the other side is greener. But unless you jump on it, take a bite, it's a cow. You will never know. So, <laughs> so now you're going you're using, hopefully, I'm making this point, because hopefully you used your reason to come to the point of knowing that it's only going to take you so far, and you've reasoned you need guidance and help to take advantage of these two syllables, Krishna. And that's what Guru Goswami says, that actually, through the pen of Guru Goswami, Purnamasi says, and the uh, dramas of Guru Goswami, Tunde, Tundavali, Oh! What a problem I have, mm -hmm. that uh, with these two syllables, Krishna, mm -hmm, then I cannot take advantage of the nectar, the bliss contained in these two syllables. Uh, when I chant, I wish that I had thousands of tongues and thousands of ears to take advantage of this. When that name dances in the courtyard of my heart, my senses become inert, they, they, they become incapable of relating to sense objects in the way that they did previously for their own satisfaction. Hmm? So this is, in a way, this is a, this is a good prayer uh, for the Guru. Oh, I need more tongues, I need more ears to take advantage of this Krishna Nam. Can you help me? Can you give me your tongue? Can you give me your ears? And I will share this sound with you. And we will together try to take advantage of that, understand what it is, and talk about it. What happened? What is it like? How did it affect you? Hmm? And we see, oh, what's happening? It's happening in these books. People say it happens. It's happening to us. And new things are happening. And then 
we have new books. Mm -hmm. So we need help. This is a big problem. Mm -hmm. Will you help me? I'd like to help. Will you help me?